everybody, Mac Engel, Engel Engel Podcast. Thank you very much for joining me for the summer edition. Uh, I wasn't going to do one. I was going to take a little bit of a break, but I had an idea that hit me that I wanted to share and sort of flesh out. Uh, as you can tell, I am in costume. Uh, I'm kind of an out of the closet Indiana Jones nerd. This is the hat. I'm a little bummed I didn't bring the whip. I do have the whip. I do not have a six shooter. And uh, I don't think I have the right pants or shirt. This is, this is like a fishing shirt, and it's kind of close. And this jacket, I get more compliments on this jacket. I actually, this was my brother's jacket. And uh, he got it from like a, a secondhand store 30 years ago, and I stole it from him. I, I, I permanently borrowed it from him. And I love it. It's a great jacket. It's a little bit heavier than the Indiana Jones jacket, but I'm not going to buy the Indiana Jones jacket because it's like a million dollars. This is close enough. So the reason I wanted to get in costume was to talk about my experience of attending the special screening of the new latest and final Indiana Jones installment, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I went on Wednesday night. The big premiere was Thursday night, global premiere, whatever. But uh, I was invited to a special screening. And I took my daughter, and uh, she brought a friend. And it was this big, giant circle of life moment for me. Because there's no character in pop culture that I loved more than Indiana Jones. There's no actor I loved more than Harrison Ford. In fact, when they came out with this movie and they were doing the press for it, I reached out to the Disney people and I, I asked if I could interview anybody. And they, they made it perfectly clear Harrison Ford was not doing any more interviews at this time. Now he is notoriously, um, I would say selective and conservative about how much media he does. He'll do it, but he doesn't love doing it. And I thought maybe I might have a shot if I give this pitch, which is, Harrison comes to Fort Worth, Texas, a couple, I think every other year to renew his helicopter pilot's license. And you'll hear stories about, oh, I saw Harrison Ford here at Target. There was, there was a picture uh, circulating around that Harrison Ford was shopping at a local Target, uh, going to some restaurant uh, one time. And he took a picture with uh, the restaurant owner. And I thought maybe, maybe I can get my Hollywood hero for a quick interview, talk about Fort Worth. Didn't work out, at least not yet. Maybe, maybe down the road. So uh, I made best with the situation, and I went to the movie on Wednesday night. And I told my daughter, you know what? We should dress up. We should dress up. We should, we should do this. I've been to screenings before. I've never been to screenings before where people dressed up. I've never dressed up for a movie. I've seen cosplay people and those conventions and whatnot. I've never participated in it because I'm a sports journalist. I'm a sports fan. I'm, I'm here and they're there. No, there's no gap. For all of you sports fans out there who are convinced you are better than the Trekkie, you are convinced you're better than the people who dress up like Harry Potter characters, you're not. You're the same. We're all a giant group of nerds sitting in the seats, watching somebody else perform. Shoot a basket, throw a touchdown pass, brandish a bullwhip at the bad guy, wave the wand to make he who shall not be named go away. We're all the same. If you're wearing a jersey with the name on the back that says Prescott, Favre, Curry, James, Nowitzki. It's the exact same as me wearing an Indiana Jones jacket and hat, pretending to be somebody else, hoping and pretending that we can be that guy one day, even if he's real or he's fake. It's the same thing. We're all paying to watch somebody else perform. If it's scripted or not, it's the same thing. I have just as much ability to affect the outcome of Dak Prescott's performance as I do 
Indiana Jones getting the girl at the end and slaying the bad guy. Zero. We all are a collection of giant dorks. It's better to admit it. And the beauty of my experience on Wednesday night is that I came out of the closet and admitted to the world that I really am no different than the cosplay dorks that I used to make fun of. There are levels, however, to this madness. So I'm in the theater, my daughter and her friend, a couple guys sitting next to me, and at the, at the, uh, before they introduce the film, the moderator, who's in complete Indiana Jones attire, says, anybody who dressed up, come on down. I want to get a picture and we can participate in a trivia contest. I'm about ready to be 50 years old. I look 48, and I'm like, you know what? I'm doing this. I want the story. I want to keep stacking up life experiences, so I'm going to do it. I'm near the top of the theater, and I run down like a contestant on The Price is Right. I'm so excited that I'm going to be amidst my brothers and sisters and dorks who love Indiana Jones. There was like eight of us. And the only problem with my costume was that I was wearing shorts and flip-flops. Why? Because it's 158,000 degrees. And I'm sitting here looking at these gentlemen, and there was this one girl. She was dressed up as short round from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And I'm looking, and I'm smiling at everybody. I'm like, oh, my God, this, this is really happening. I'm doing this. <laughs> and then I'm noticing, I'm like, yeah, my costume's pretty good. These people go way into this. I think this hat, this Indiana Jones hat, I bought from Banana Republic. I think it was like $30. Back when $30 was $30, now it's like three cents. The guy standing next to me, I said, hey, man, that's a really cool hat. I'm trying to make conversation. He said, yeah, I, I got it uh, from a hat maker in Fort Worth. And I said, you mind my asking, how much was that? He said, oh. He said, this one was $800. $800 on a hat? That's insane. He did it. The whole attire said it cost him $2,500 to play dress up. Mine cost me probably less than 50 bucks. That's a different rant. So the moderator says, OK, we've got trivia. OK, we've got trivia. And he asks the question, then he comes to me, and there's a theater full of Indiana Jones dorks. I'm in the outfit. I better know this. The guy asks me the question, who is the name of Indiana Jones' friend who has a part in the latest Indiana Jones movie? This is my time, my life. I have prepared for this moment for 40 years. If I don't know this, why well, go on? And panic sets in. I'm 16 years old, and I'm taking the SATs, and I'm looking at all these questions, and I'm like, oh, no. I don't know the answers to any of these. And they tell you not to guess. This is Indiana Jones. I should crush the Indiana Jones SAT score. I can recite virtually the entire movie of Raiders of the Lost Ark, even the parts in German. And right now, in that moment, I can't remember the name of Indiana Jones' friend who is in the final film. I've seen the trailer 850 times. I know who immediately it is. And I'm like, panic. And there's my daughter with her friend at the top. And she's watching her dad gag. And then, much like the time the staff of Ra caught the beam of light to show where the Well of Souls is, it came to me. His name was Sala. Thank you, God. I'm 49 years old. I've never been more proud of myself than that moment. I came through, and I nailed the deep three from 50 feet, pulled up Steph Curry style, and I drained it. And I got prizes. <laughs> And I'm, I'm so ashamed and embarrassed to admit how excited I was to get these prizes. It was like an Indiana Jones Funko and a hat. I gave it to my daughter. I go back to the top of the theater, and she's very proud of her dad that her dork dad won prizes at the Indiana Jones screening. 
So now I have realized, okay, these are my people, kind of. There are levels to this. Movie starts. There's a gentleman sitting to my left. There we see our hero on screen, de-aged properly. And this guy who's not even in Indiana Jones attire, want to make sure I do say before the movie started, I did take off the hat and the jacket because it is 150 degrees. And the guy sitting in the next left of me says, yeah, yeah. He's clapping. I'm like, okay, is this going to be a one-time thing? No. Throughout the entire film, the entire film, it's like a two-hour and 20-minute movie. Anytime Indy had an excitement moments, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. At this point, 20 minutes into the film, I'm like, my main goal now is to make sure I avoid eye contact with this guy. So I make sure that I'm not one of him. I'm not going to, not going to do anything to stop or douse his enthusiasm, but I'm not going to participate in. And it gets better. Multiple times during the movie, his legs started to kick like this, like a four-year-old who's looking at a plate of pancakes about ready to serve at his plate. He's kicking his legs. So we finish. As the movie goes on, I am completely overcome with sentimentality because I can remember just the absolute joy and excitement when I was eight or nine, and I had to beg my mom to let me go see Raiders of the Lost Ark because she was concerned about the melting faces near the end, justifiably. I loved the movie. I loved it so much. And then when Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom came out, my mom, God love her, she takes me and five buddies to see the, the film, and she's sitting there at the end of the row, and me and my buddies are sitting here watching this movie, and guys' hearts getting ripped out and all this other stuff. I can remember that, and I can remember in high school going with my buddy Matt Churchman. Right after high school ends, school ends, we race to go see Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I can remember that, and I can remember even going to see the last one, which sucked. Even going to see that, I can remember that, and I'm sitting here, and now I'm with my daughter in the theater watching this film with her. And I know in that moment she was okay with her dad being a giant cool Indiana Jones dork. When it comes to all of this, the beauty of it wasn't necessarily the film itself. The film is good. It's not great. It's good. And if you like Indiana Jones and you're okay with an adventurer whose mission in life is to take rare antiquities and put them into a museum while wearing a leather jacket in the middle of the desert, if you're okay with that setup, then you have to be okay with the setup with the fifth and final Indiana Jones movie. I loved it. And I loved more than anything else because I had a chance to take my daughter so she could know her dad was a giant, is a giant dork too. And it's perfectly okay whether you're wearing a Stephen Curry jersey as he pops three pointers from the 400 level seats that you're watching, or you're sitting in an audience amongst a bunch of losers and dorks who love Indiana Jones while wearing the jacket and the hat. My hat's off to you. See you next time.